This video will be focusing on uh, the second half of chapter 11, uh, focusing on maintaining biodiversity. So we'll cover this in three major parts. Number one is how biodiversity is affected by humans in chapter 11.6. Uh, then we'll think about why do we need to maintain biodiversity and basically why is it important that we do so in chapter 11.7. Then we'll lastly think about how can we do so in, uh, in, in different scales in some sense, and that will be in, in chapter 11.8 in the textbook. So let's start with how is biodiversity affected, or in some sense, how they are reduced by human activity. One of the things to notice about studying this half of the chapter is that in the textbook, it is extremely wordy. They actually go into a lot of detail and great lengths to uh, explain certain concepts. Uh, one of the tips I would say in terms of uh, learning this, it refer to the specification, see exactly what it is that you need to know, pick some examples from each, uh, from each spec point in some sense, and then just practice loads of exam questions. Learn what the content would be using the mark scheme uh, rather than trying to just memorize everything from the textbook. Everything I've written in this mind map will be sort of one of the demonstrations in how I have done it. So here, there are three points in how uh, biodiversity is affected by humans. So let's start with deforestation. So deforestation is when lots of trees are chopped down. So that you're de destroying the forest uh, for lots of different reasons, either by to make paper, making furniture, or clearing it so that we have ground to grow, uh, to, to build farms, to grow crops, etc. The thing is, if you're doing that, you're obviously decreasing the bi uh, habitat biodiversity because you're destroying the habitats of lots of organisms, be it bacteria, small insects, or birds. You're also affecting the surrounding species biodiversity, biodiversity because you are affecting the habitat biodiversity. So just because you're chopping down trees, it's, it's not just the trees as the habitat, but perhaps the soil or perhaps some of the surrounding areas next to the forest that could also be affected. The second thing is agriculture. So obviously, as human population grows, we need to have more farms to grow more food to sustain the population. So one of the things is I mentioned earlier, it could lead to deforestation. As, and then what we mentioned earlier will, will then happen. Some of the things that we can also do is to remove hedgerows, basically making more space to grow more stuff. But again, there actually is a very high biodiversity within the hedgerows uh, that people are not really aware of. Uh, the use of herbicides and pesticides can also affect uh, biodiversity because they can be washed away into the rivers, which can then lead to bioaccumulation, um, leading to toxic, um, toxic levels to be too high in the larger uh, fish, for example, which can then obviously have an impact. Usually we try uh, with the rise of genetic techniques being more and more uh, advanced, we can try now do cloning or selective breeding or um, genetic engineering to make sure that all of the crops that we grow grow quickly or have certain resistance to certain things. And that tends to lead to monoculture, meaning that we are all growing things, uh, we're growing things that all have the same genes, same resistant genes, for example. So we are decreasing the genetic biodiversity. Um, this can have a knock-on effect perhaps in the future when suddenly we have um, certain crops that grow very quickly uh, and are resistant to pests, but for example, um, not resistant to flooding, then suddenly if flooding occurs and all of them will be wiped away and the whole species can may then become endangered or even extinct. So that's one thing that we need to uh, think about later on. The third point would be climate change and one of the most obvious ways to illustrate this is by talking about global warming. So global warming is the general increase in uh, global temperature and can lead to several things. Number one, drought. So again, lack of water, plants can grow, species die out. Um, temperature increasing uh, leads to the melting of ice caps, which can then obviously uh, is decreasing habitat biodiversity. So, for example, polar bears have no longer have ice caps to live on, leading to their extinction or endangerment. Uh, the melting of ice caps also lead to increasing the sea levels, which can then have several knock-on effects. Number one, it can affect marine life, so uh, then perhaps leading to a decrease in species biodiversity. It can also lead to a change in the temperature, so uh, causing the uh, certain parts of the sea to become colder because of the melting ice caps or even warmer because of the global warming, which can then usually create storms. Um, the details of how the change of temperature can lead to storms, uh, you don't need to know that for biology, but it might be of interest for those of you who do geography.
and also flooding as well because of the increase in sea level, both of which can uh, devastate certain areas near the sea. Uh, so again, destroying habitats, which can then have a knock-on effect on species biodiversity. So lots of these things are interlinked, so make sure you use your common sense, things that you've seen in the news, etc., to uh, when answering these questions. Now we'll talk about why do we need to maintain biodiversity. I mentioned in the last video that the importance of biodiversity or having a high biodiversity is so that because that uh, species are interdependent, right? There are species that are relying on other species, perhaps more than one, for uh, their survival. So we need to be aware of uh, there are three reasons to do so. So the one that I mentioned earlier would be ecological reasons. Uh, then we can also think about it in terms of economical reasons uh, and also aesthetic reasons. So first of all, it seems silly, but um, aesthetic reason is one of the possible uh, points you can make in the in the exam, which you will get your mark. So some people think that it's inspiring to look at forest uh, because of the beauty of nature, and uh, there are certain researches that show that it, um, by looking at plants or looking at beautiful nature can help their recovery from uh, any any sort of injuries in some sense. So aesthetic reason is a legitimate uh, point to write down in the exam. So just make sure you know that. As for economical reasons, first of all, it would be deforestation. We mentioned earlier for a, var a variety of different things. Uh, if we keep doing that, we are decreasing the ability to grow crops because deforestation can lead to soil erosion. And what will happen is that when soil erosion occurs, uh, we could ha easily have a loss of the mineral ions or nutrients that are in the soil, which can then hinder the ability to grow healthy crops, uh, which can obviously lead to a loss of crops, which links to the economical reasons. Uh, linking to that, loss of any loss of habitat doesn't have to be just forest, could mean that we have a lower discovery of new and useful species because they are already wiped out due to the loss of habitat before we can actually find them. So a classic example would be uh, uh, rainforest and coral reefs where they tend to find seem to be finding more and more new antibiotics or new medicine uh, to treat, for example, cancer in those particular areas. But the thing is, if we don't conserve... Uh, these particular habitats, then we won't be able to discover new things, which can obviously have an economical advantages in that sense. Thirdly, uh, because we do selective breeding, so we have less cross breeding in some sense, so we're losing alleles there. And that could also mean that we are losing resistance to abiotic factors, for example, climate change. And I mentioned this example earlier already. Yes, the crops are growing quickly, but the thing is they're not resistant to flooding, therefore they're all wiped out, um, and meaning you're losing a high amounts of crops, which can then have economical impact. So we need to make sure, in order, not, in order not to have that economical loss, we need to maintain a certain level of uh, biodiversity. Now, the third reason for maintaining biodiversity is uh, the more scientific one, in some sense, ecological reasons. So I mentioned about interdependence of the species, so you understood already. Uh, in, in relation to that, there's a particular thing called keystone species. So these are individuals within a, a food chain or fruit web or in a particular habitat that, ha that can have a massive impact on the other species. So it is... Uh, what we call keystone species. So sometimes if we don't maintain biodiversity, which could lead to a depletion of the keystone species, that would have a massive knock-on effect, uh, probably worse than if it's any other species. So we need to be aware of identifying what are the, which are the keystone species in different habitats and make sure that we protect them in particular. Now moving on to the next part is how do we actually do that? So there are three parts here. Number one is conservation. Uh, to preserve uh, biodiversity, sustainable development, and certain conservation agreements that have been set uh, locally or internationally. So let's start off with conservation. So first of all, what is conservation? Uh, conservation is the preservation or management or, of a certain environments or the organisms in that particular habitat. So we're trying to preserve the number of individuals or the number of species in certain areas. And we can do so by two different ways institute or exitute. So institute, as the name implies, in, it is within their natural habitat. So for example, wildlife reserves a marine conservation zone. So you're highlighting this particular area, you're not letting people coming in uh, so that to conserve that particular, those species in the, those area. Exitute 
uh, X meaning outside, it's in a man-made environment. It's outside of their natural habitat. So classic examples are like zoos, botanical gardens, uh, seed banks, very similar to gene banks, and captive breeding programs, which are of particular interest if uh, we're trying to uh, preserve certain uh, animals or organisms that are um, facing endangerment or, uh, or are very, very rare. We also have sustainable development, which refers to uh, any method to or any policies that means that we can supply enough resources for the current um, demands while we are ensuring that there are future supplies for the next few generations. So there are some examples that you will learn more in chapter 24 in A2, uh, for example, sustainable fishing. How do we make sure that, yes, we are getting fish now, but we also leave enough uh, but we leave the younger fish alone, we put them back into the sea, so make sure that they can mature into um, uh, adult fish and lay their own eggs. Uh, and then we can capture them and lay, let their eggs develop into the fish for the next few generations. So this is just one example of sustainable development. So lastly, we'll talk about conservation agreements. Unfortunately, you do need to know what the three conservation agreements are in this particular case. So I would just say I've summarized the key points here already, make sure you learn them and use them in your answer. Probably it will only be about two free marks, but here we go. So we have two international agreements here. Uh, first of all, it's IUCN. IUCN stands for the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And within it, we have the CITES Treaty. CITES stand for the Con uh, Convention on international trade in endangered species. So the key goal of this particular uh, trade uh, uh, conservation agreement is that we can regulate the international trade of wild species. So because certain species are tend to be hunted for, for, uh, for making different products. So we need to make sure that we regulate that trade uh, to, uh, to ensure that they won't reach the point where they become uh, endangered or even extinct. Now we've got the Rio Convention. Uh, in which they have three particular parts within the Rio Convention, uh, but these those three parts refer to these three things. Sustainable development, which we mentioned earlier, how we can make sure we have enough supplies for the future generations. Uh, stabilizing the greenhouse gas level, so specifically about the climate change, global, global warming issues, how we can try to slow down global warming or even reverse it and also decreasing desertification, where after deforestation, often we can lead to the formation of deserts, meaning that we can't, we can no longer grow crops or grow plants in those areas. And it makes it a, an extreme environment for other organisms to survive. So we try to prevent that to maintain the biodiversity. So that's the real convention. Lastly, we've got a local conservation agreement to be aware of, which is the countryside stewardship scheme. And that is specific in the UK. And the, one of the main goals is to improve the aesthetics of the countryside to make sure that people are enjoying it and also to, to protect the uh, habitat biodiversity there as well. So when people learn how to appreciate the countryside, they will also learn how to protect it and make sure they're not damaging it to maintain the uh, habitat and species and genetic biodiversity in those areas. So there we have it. Uh, this is the second part of chapter 11, uh, talking about how biodiversity is affected by humans by through deforestation, agriculture, and climate change. Make sure you know the knock-on effects and some examples of uh, how humans have done it. Then we talked about why we need to maintain it for aesthetic reasons, economical reasons, and ecological reasons, specifically mentioning the keystone species there, protecting them to make sure that we don't have a massive knock-on effect. Then lastly, about how we can maintain the biodiversity for different types of conservation, sustainable development, and uh, abiding to the conservation agreements internationally and locally.